John Perry here. It is Wednesday, the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm about to reveal what this mystery creature from last week was, right here, right now, on What's It Wednesday. (laughs) This, a lot of you thought was a rodent of some sort. This is not a rodent. Some of you thought it was a rat. It's not a rat. This is a lagomorph. This is a cottontail rabbit. And the main difference between rodents and lagomorphs is that lagomorphs have four incisors on the top, which we, which we saw last time. And lagomorphs have enamel on both the front and the back of their teeth. So it's actually harder for them to grind their teeth down into the chisel shape that we're seeing here. Lagomorphs and rodents both have continually growing teeth. So they're constantly grinding their teeth down and sharpening them on their food. And the same is true for their molars. Their molars are constantly growing. And if you look at the the way that the, the jaw hinge works, it actually enables some sliding forward and back quite a bit, quite a bit of sliding, which is good to help them sharpen those teeth and, uh, you know, make sure that they're, all things are in order. There are some major benefits in having teeth that grow continually. Obviously, you can, you know, wear them down and it's cool. It's okay. You know, beavers, (laughs) the most obvious example of having a huge benefit because they can constantly grow their teeth. But being able to constantly grow your teeth also has its disadvantages. If there is any sort of um, jaw injury that makes it so that you cannot grind your teeth down, you are pretty much screwed. Let me show you this picture. This is my book on skulls. It's pretty cool. Little book here. But it shows this horrible, horrible example of a of a rabbit that for some reason was not able to grind his teeth down and they just curl in and cause horrible pain for the animal. This guy probably starved to death, wasn't able to eat because his teeth got all messed up. So, you know, (laughs) there are pros and cons to many things in evolution. Horrible way to go. Ugh. So, Cottontail Rabbit, congratulations to all you who got that correct. All right, now, for this week's guest, I have something very, very special to show you. I'm really excited about this guy. Uh, Please ignore the droopy uh, (laughs) bone there. (laughs) That's held on with a piece of tape. This came to me from Shintimini Wildlife Center as well, just like the rabbit skull. Unfortunately, I'm missing the jaw for this critter, but even though it's not in perfect condition, I'm also missing the uh, sclerotic rings that birds have. They have that uh, little (laughs) ring of bones in the eye, which this guy is missing. But I feel like this is still a really worthy guest on our show because it shows a really neat example of cranial kinesis. So in humans and in most mammals, we're used to all joints being like true joints, where two bones come together. And so all of the movement, for the most part, in our body is between bones. I mean, there's a little bit of flexing of bones. It happens when you walk. You know, bones bend a little bit. But in birds... They have, not all birds, but in in this species and in many others, they have a really thin spot of bone up here on the top. And they've got muscles that allow this whole front part of the beak to move. And when this thing was alive, this bone up here was very oily and flexible. It's now dry and brittle, so I have to be really careful when I show you how this moves. But I will be able to show you a little bit. I'm just going to gently pull. Can you see that? You can see that the this entire bottom piece of bone here slides forward and the beak turns upward and that is not a true joint that's actually the flexing of bone and these birds do that in life. Let's look at that from the bottom real close up here. See that movement? This structure of bone here just slides forward. And that allows this animal to have extremely dexterous movement of the beak 
It can very delicately maneuver its food. It can very delicately groom its own feathers, groom the feathers of a loved one, as birds so awesomely do. Birds can't reach the feathers on the back of their neck, so a lot of times when they when they pair up to mate, their mate, or even sometimes in some species that are really social, just their, their buddies, will groom the back of their necks for them, which is one of the sweetest things in nature. I love seeing animals groom each other. There's even, there's even examples of cross-species grooming, where uh, two birds will get together from totally different species and decide to groom each other's feathers. It's freaking adorable. Cranial kinesis in this, in this species, which is not doesn't happen in all birds, but happens in quite a few. It's a really neat, unique joint. Birds have all kinds of weird joints in their bodies that you wouldn't expect. Very unusual compared to mammals like ourselves. Uh, these these little bones here act as shades. They they create a structure that goes over the eye, pokes out a little bit over the eye, kind of like a baseball cap to uh, shield from too much sunlight. So yeah, really, really neat specimen. Let me know what you think this is in the comments. Good luck. Stay curious.